Dawson's Rambles. Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here with a quick Dawson's Rambles news update on the news that came out today of Power Rangers contract with Nick being renewed through 2021. That's it, it's Nick signing out. No, I'm just kidding. The reason I wanted to make this video was instead of waiting for more news to stack is that there was a lot of topics that always come up whenever a discussion about this happens, whether it's speculation or actual news about Nick's relationship with Power Rangers and whether or not it's good for it. And I wanted to give a couple opinion points about it. Because uh, I know like a lot of people aren't happy. It always comes with the same discussion. If people aren't happy with Nick, but then it's like, well, where's it going to go? And that opens up a whole separate thing of Netflix is always brought up and then people are like, oh, it won't work because Nick has a bigger reach, which... I'm not going to pretend to be an expert about that, but I think that's a bunch of shenanigans. Look, look how well Voltron did. Um, that's like a whole separate video. Maybe I'll do a separate video on why I think PR should do something like Netflix. I think that could be better. I think we could get better content. I mean, we saw how well Voltron has done with kids of all ages. But, like, again, that's a separate video. I want to talk about the Nick stuff. So, a lot of it comes down to you get the people that are blaming Nick for the writing on Power Rangers. And I'm not going to say that I know everything behind the scenes. I don't, by any stretch. But I've heard various things, and it's not like Nick has some sort of executive there being like, dumb this down, make this stupider, because the way Power Rangers is written is playing with a really outdated set of kid gloves, which pretty much most Nick's other shows aren't doing. So it's Saban's creative team that is making the quality show it is now. I do not think... Nick has anything to do with the writing. I've seen some people say that they're mandating more comedy, which I don't know if is true or not. I don't think that's necessarily 100% true, but I think Saban is in charge of the type of comedy because the comedy on the Nick shows varies, but if you flip through the channels in the last few years, or the shows that they offer, it's not all fart jokes like Power Rangers is because Power Rangers is clearly playing from like their old bulk and skull playbook, but also like an even further dumbed down version. So even if that aspect is true, again, like anything Nick is saying to them, Saban's in control of how they go about it. So, but I personally don't think Nick owning it, like, and them airing it has anything to do with the quality of what's being put out. I honestly think if they were more involved or were like a part owner, like the way TMNT is like owned by them. I don't know if it's like part, but like they don't own Power Rangers. They they have the rights to air it. That's what it is. It's not like one of the shows they own. So I think if they were more involved, it might actually be a little bit better and the dialogue might be better. Um, but that's just me personally. But setting that aside, the large conversation that always pops up around it is the conversation about the stupid hiatus. Because instead of, like back in the, the day, we used to air... Depending on the season, it downgraded over the years from like 50-something. I think it used to be 50 for like MMPR, I don't remember. But like 50, give or take, to like 32 was the last lowest during the, the end of the Disney era. That's what we used to get it. It used to be anywhere between 30 and 50 episodes a year, depending on the year. Um, and now we have 20 episodes and then 20 episodes. And like it's a whole series split in two into two seasons. And honestly, like... The whole conversation around it, I think, is just so boxed in. I honestly don't necessarily have a problem with how Nick airs it. To be honest, I think Power Rangers is in such a bad place creatively. What matters is how good the show is. So I don't care if they only made 13 episodes that they binged at once on Netflix or 13 episodes throughout the whole year, or if they split it into three seasons. If the storytelling is good, that's what matters. The problem is right now the storytelling is not good, and the way they split apart the seasons is basically a half measure where you don't feel like, oh, season one, can't wait for season two. It feels like it's clearly one whole series that is split into two with the most minimal effort possible. And it just, it creates in so much boxed in thinking and people complain about the summer hiatus, like it's not normal, but every other show goes on a hiatus during the summer. I realize that it's weirder because it's splitting the season apart instead of like most shows in their run in May and then go for summer break and then start up in fall. But it's still like a normal time to go on a hiatus. And there's also lots of other shows, especially in the last five years, that will like split their seasons up like that. Like it'll be season three, but you'll have season three A, and then they'll go on hiatus for like two to three months and then do season three B. So like it's normal. Like whenever these conversations come up, I feel like people that follow PR and Toku do not watch any other shows. And like this hiatus is an unheard of concept. It's just kind of ridiculous, and I think we shouldn't be focusing so much on it. It's, it's stupid, because it doesn't matter, and I, well, I actually like that we have a consistent schedule. 
like most other kids shows that I follow or that I know that other people follow, they seemingly air at random where you'll be like, two episodes, five month break, one episode, four month break, seven episodes, two week break, and it's like random. And if you aren't on top of it with like a DVR or you're following a social media, it's hard to follow. So I, yeah, as frustrating as aspects of it can be, I like that I know every year PR will be on air this long and then we'll go on hiatus and then be on there this long. And the only thing that changes is every now and then we'll get like a random week break because of something that Nick's scheduling has. But every show has that, like where they might have to go on hiatus for a week for some reason, like of a conflicting show. But the point is, I think the schedule is fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, to be honest. I think that what's wrong is the content. And this conversation always brings up so much boxed in thinking that this fandom has, I feel, because we're used to where how PR used to be. Like I mentioned at the beginning, the old format of airing it over a year but with between 30 and 50 episodes. Not to mention for those of us that also watch Sentai and Rider, you get 40 plus episodes all year. And that's a bad example, just like animes. Like, Pokemon never stops. It's like a soap opera. It just always happens. But that's because it's Japan. They handle things differently there. It's a totally different way of handling things. So you can't bring that way of thinking into it. And in a lot of ways, because of the way we've normalized more of a format now, it's kind of surprising when I think back that we sort of adopted a similar-esque format to the way Sentai airs with more hiatuses. But back in the day we did, but it just doesn't work that way anymore. And we create this boxed-in thinking that Somehow, if we were to get 30 to 40 episodes a year again, that's one series, like Samurai is one series that airs for 40 episodes in a year, that somehow that's going to make the show good. It would still be the same Ninja Steel or the same Dino Chart, it just would be in one year. What we need to worry about is the stories, because honestly, if it were up to me, I would just do one, if we can only do 20 episodes, let's do a Ninja Steel adaptation, 20 episodes, because they waste so much time on filler anyway. 20 episodes, one Sentai season, move on to the next one. Q-Ranger, you want more time? Make that two seasons. But just make the storytelling good. Because to me, it doesn't matter whether you're 13 episodes and you have a good storyline, or you want to do two 20-episode seasons. Just make it good. It doesn't matter what Sentai's formula is, or what Power Rangers formula was back during the 90s when we had... Like, that doesn't matter. It, it just doesn't. Who cares how many episodes they air or when they air them? Just make them good. And we have this, this boxed in thinking of like, well, Sentai does this and we used to do this and that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we used to do. It, it should be about the stories. Because like at this point, PR is in such a bad place creatively. I just want to see the show be good. I don't care when it airs. And I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with the two seasons. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily personally handle it that way all the time, but there's nothing wrong with it so long as the story's good. Because lots of shows air two seasons, because I totally get it, because in, in your mind it's like, well Power Rangers is always one really long season, but then you might be watching something else, like like J Young Justice or something, That's this is season one, is 20 episodes, and season two is two. Why is that different from PR? It's just because your mind is conditioned to it. It's just like my mind's conditioned that the uh, the White Ranger suit from Die Ranger is part of the MMPR team, or that the suit the Megazord suits from three different Sentai seasons somehow belong to the Jew Ranger suits. Like if I grew up in Japan, that wouldn't make sense, but I'm just conditioned that way. And it's a weird thing because I totally get it on both sides because I grew up with and still live a part of this this world where there's things are structured this way. So I get that way of thinking, but I follow so much other TV. I know how it also works, and it's just. I feel like it just creates this really narrow-minded aspect of it, is that we have this idea of how a PR season should be structured, and it really doesn't matter. I really don't care in the, in the future how we structure it, just make it good. And I know I've been repetitive about that, but that's what I want to talk about today. I think the news of Nick getting PR is good news, because even if we stay in this same crap hole for three more years, four more years, five more years, so long as the franchise keeps going, there's a chance it can eventually improve, I hope. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that it's continuing in that aspect. I'm definitely hoping for better, but more than likely we'll be getting the same quality and then yet another super season. But I just wanted to talk about that, is that we need to stop worrying so much about the hiatus that takes place at a normal time and just worry about the quality of the show. And then once the show gets better eventually in uh, a thousand years, then we can talk about, you know, how we want it to air. But I feel like we just have bigger fish to fry right now. Anyway, that's about it. Until next time, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Dawson Ryder, signing out.